Hello and welcome to the video tutorial number 15 on how to set up an online shop with Dreamweaver and PHP. In the previous chapter we finished registering a user. Let's refresh our mind a little. This file was the one that opened us the user register and we just needed to link it from somewhere to create the register. To do it more quickly we will create a quick link here from the left menu. If you remember here we have the catalog, I'm gonna remember it here. Here we have the catalog with the different types of shoes we had. So we're going to make a line link right here below and then we will type register. I will I will make a BR before it. There we are. And this will be a link that will take us to the user user register. You see it's created automatically. I save, update, and it already appears here. You have to be aware of the link. Bear in mind I'm modifying a catalog that is within the folder includes, but this catalog will show in a page that that is in the root. So uh, never mind. You will realize of it in a wing, you will see. I try to register and it gives me an error because it's taking me to localhost stroke user register. Why? Because with this dot dot stroke it takes me to the previous folder. I don't want to go there, I want to go to the local folder. I save, go back, update, and now when I register it works correctly. Fine, we have the register process clear. So next thing will be the user access. The, the typical user and password you have seen in thousands of pages. It's very easy to do. We will create a new page. I usually we copy the index, copy paste, and I will call it access. I open the access page and modify this to user access. And here the typical form in which we use a combination of email and password. For example, <coughs> enter the page with your data. Now we create a form with insert form, a text field, I accept all this as a default. It asks me if I want to add the form labels and I will say yes. And here I will write email. And the new field that will be password right here. I add a new field, insert form, text field. I will write here its name str email <coughs> and here I will name it str password fine we've got it we would now need a button to validate the form so we choose here button okay it has to be a submit type so that it will execute the form so these two the date of these two fields will move to the destination I've chosen as you can see, the action of the form is still void. We are preparing it for, for Dreamweaver to do it for us. You will see it's very easy. We are here, so in server behavior, we tell it user authentication, connect user. I get a new window that says as follows, get entry from what form? As I only got one, that one. Username field is the email and the password is the password. It almost detects it on its own. Login using the connection, choose connection. In table, it's table user. Username column, it would be the email again. And the password column would be str password. If the connection is right, go to a page we haven't created yet, but will be access OK PHP. And if connection fails, go to access error PHP. We will create both of them in a moment. It also gives us the chance to go to the previous URL, if existing. What for? Sometimes we enter a page with a private section and it tells us to register to access it. If we click this, when that access page gives us access to it, it will take us to the page where it didn't allow us to enter. We will see that later because it's quite complicated to explain now, but we will see it later. And here we're restricting access by username and password or username, password, and access level. It means that in a page we can have different access levels for administrator, administrator editor, etc.
So it basically gives us the possibility to select the level. By now we won't use it. Maybe later we will. So we will leave it there. I accept and automatically it has added in the action here the log inform action which we don't need to know what it is but basically it redirects us to this page. You see it has added some code up here such a big code. It basically does this. Select me the email and password from the user table where the email is this and the password is this. That login username and that password are these two values here. I don't mean that you understand it all and I won't analyze the code line by line by line but it's not the point of this course but later on we will go more in depth with this all. <coughs> Next important thing is this piece here. The session start. Okay, why this? And why am I centering so much on this? If you have a look here in this in the code, it says session username equals username and session user group equals login string group. What does this mean? Session variables are very interesting PHP variables that will keep that value as long as the person session in the page is open. That is, when I log in with my password, that username data will be available in all the PHP pages I open with one condition with the condition that I give it the session start. This is important. If I put session start, it will keep me that data throughout the web. What does this mean? It means that this session start will have to appear in all the pages of my web. Does it mean I have to add it to all of my pages? Well, there are more cunning ways of doing it. For example, if we see that in all the pages we use the connection to the data access, which probably we do, the smart thing would be putting in choose connection this code here straight away. So let's do it. I copy, well, first I save the access page. I haven't done it so far. Copy. Now I go to connections. We haven't opened this file. It has been generated when creating the connection to database. I get into it and here in the first line I put this. It has to be PHP. So I fill it in with the PHP. You see? Here it basically tells me if the session isn't selected, it automatically starts with session start, right? Um, as I told you, I don't want to explain too much this type of code because we're moving on the ground of programming and I don't want to scare you. But basically, uh, with doing this almost in every page in which we have use huge connection, it will make us the session start. I save this and let's see if it already works but first let's make the OK and not OK page we said before as you can see here we have the access OK and access error pages so let's create them once again I take index copy paste and rename it access OK now I create another one and it will be access error as you can see I'm using the template all the time using these pages as templates in access OK we will say here welcome and thank you for logging in or or whatever you want in access server we'll say we'll say warning there has been an error in the login process let's see I run the login process try again or recover your password Here we will make a link to try again. We select this text. We click on link and drag it to access PHP. And we will leave recover your password for later because this implies sending an email and it's a bit more complicated. But basically we have both pages already created. I save this and I'm going to the web. But before in the catalog page where we have written the register thing, I'm going to include a new link with login. This login will take us to access PHP. I'm going faster here because we have done this many times and I understand you're already managing the thing and don't want to stop in everything or else this will be a never ending story. I save, I go to the web, I update and it says here login. Okay, what is failing here? Write what I told you before, the double dot dash. Dreamweaver is intelligent but not as to know where all of your files are so we just fix it save go back update and now i will log in with my email and password i will take whatever to get an error 
send and it tells me warning there has been an error in the login process try again or recovery password I will try again with the right password I think it was triple X I will try it right okay thank you for logging in and now I will be logged in as a user let's make a couple of details for example let's force it so that here we have to write an email and that the password is hidden with asterisk we already know how to do that you go to the access page in email I will use the sprite to mark it as compulsory and in type I will choose email we have done this before and in the field password not only will make it compulsory as well but also I will select it as a password field now we save and the work is done so far let's have a look to check everything I click send and it automatically asks me for values in both fields if I type anything but an email here I will say this is not a valid format for you to see how it works and now um, yes I think we have enough time uh, for me it's interesting everything every time I register that, that the program greets me in welcome Jorge welcome whoever to show that the page has really recognized me as a genuine user we can do this in this part because once I have logged in theoretically I, I won't see this login anymore but the message like hello Jorge hello whoever so let's do this very quickly as we have seen the session variables if you remember we have here the mm username is being saved in the login username what is this if we look for it a little before it equals the email so by now we will make the email to appear and later on we will shift that for a proper name it will look much more professional but at least for you to see it and not to complicate this chapter in excess because I admit it's kind of difficult but I'm sure if you follow these steps you will make it um, the username let's use this we'll copy this variable and we will use it in catalog remember catalog was the left side of this page this part in orange color so we will do as follows we'll write some very easy code we say if session user name equals or or better different from nothing if it has any value make it appear with echo appearing in the screen I will add the following if you don't understand this part of the code don't worry we will go in depth later hello dot semicolon here open an if key and down here I close it and all this will be PHP there it is now it will appear in colors and we will understand it much better this means if the variable username has any value let it do this I mean if its value is other than blank let it tell me hello plus my email and if it's a blank value let it take me to access PHP so I will just add an else meaning if and if not this is very easy we'll write the else there can you see and now let's see how it works you see I've updated and as I had logged in before it greets me with my email address well I think if you watch this chapter a couple of times you can do it step by step and I think it can be very interesting in the next chapter we will see how to put your name here hello Jorge or Luis or whatever and I think we can continue with that in chapter 16 I hope you like this and if you have any doubt or question you know you can contact me in my blog uh, as in my video comments and I would be grateful to receive your comments regards